All right. Thank you very much. Thanks to the organizers for inviting me. This is really great. And I also like to thank my advisor, Yigal Shudukin. This is done in, a, it, I, I'm doing this for my PhD thesis. And I'd like to thank him for proposing this research project and outlining the approach used to carry it. So um, yeah, let's get to it. So first of all, I'd like to introduce the spectral norm and its diameter. But to do that, we'll need some, some more technology. We'll need spectral invariance. So I'll, I'll just introduce spectral invariance. I know many of you know what they are, but I'll just make sure everybody's on the same page. So we start with a symplectic manifold. A spectral invariant is a function that takes a, a cohomology class and a compactly supported smooth Hamiltonian, gives us a real number, and it needs to satisfy the three following conditions. So first of all, we have continuity with respect to the offer norm. So the difference, the, the distance between two uh, spectral invariants is controlled by the offer distance between the two Hamiltonians. And then uh, we have non-degenerate spectrality for a non-degenerate uh, Hamiltonian, its uh, spectral invariant uh, lies inside its spectrum, hence the spectral in the, in the name. And then finally, we have triangle inequality right here. Uh, we take the cup product of two uh, uh, cohomology classes and the concatenation of two Hamiltonian. This is bounded from above by the sum of both the spectral invariants. Here, I wrote the, the little formula in case, just in case. All right, uh, so spectral invariants are known to exist in the following settings. It was proved by Vitel Bo that they exist in R2N with the standard symplectic form. Uh, and then it was proved to exist in, in uh, closed symplectically spherical manifolds by Schwartz in 2000 and closed symplectic manifolds in general by O in 2005 and Usher in 2013 and in convex symplectic manifolds by Fraunfelder and Schlenk in 2007. This is the one we're going to use here. Note that in case three above, since it's, they're quite general settings, we need to take into account like quantum phenomena, and instead we have a function that takes a quantum cohomology class and a Hamiltonian and gives us a real number. Perfect. Now uh, let's try to build that that uh, spectral norm. So Schwartz proved that if two Hamiltonians yield the same. Uh, 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 Hamiltonian diffeomorphism, then both their spectral invariants with respect to the units, the unit, are equal. This allows us to define spectral invariants on uh, uh, compactly supported Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms as follows, just in terms of the Hamiltonian. And then we can define the spectral norm. So spectral norm of phi here is uh, a spectral invariant of uh, one phi and one phi inverse. We can write this in terms of the Hamiltonians. This right here is usually called H bar. It's like the inverse Hamiltonian with respect to the concatenation. And then we can prove that the spectral norm is bounded from above by the offer norm. Now the offer norm is wildly used and we'd like to know like, what's the spectral diameter here? Is it finite or not? Because we can, from that question, we can have some results regarding the, the offer norm. We'll see towards the end what results we can have. Uh, now, what is known about the spectral diameter? For surfaces of genus greater than one, it's infinite. However, for the sphere, it's finite. It's bounded from above by the area of the sphere. Well, more generally, for CPN, the spectral diameter is exactly equal to n over n plus one, the area of the sphere with respect to the Fibonacci study uh, symplectic structure here. This was proved by Antov and Polterovich in 2003 and by Kislev and Shulkin in 2018. And another result is that if there exists a Hamiltonian such that all its contractible orbits are constant, then spectral diameter is infinite. This also is a result of Kislev and Shulkin from 2019, the same paper as uh, before. And then finally, for a unit cotangent disk bundle of our closed manifold, well, we know that its spectral diameter is infinite. This is a result from Mosnev, Vidcheri, and Zapolsky in 2012, and we'll see how it follows from our main result that I'll show you very soon. So now we want to study the spectral diameter for Liouville domains, and we'll try to, to find a condition for its spectral diameter to be infinite in terms of the topology of the underlying uh, Liouville manifold. So Liouville domains. To, to 
to define the Oville domains, I'll just use the following picture. So we have an exact symplectic manifold with boundary here, del D, on which there exists a, uh, a vector field that points outwards along the boundary. This is called the Liouville vector field and denoted by Y. Using the flow of this vector field, we can glue a cylinder to the boundary of our Liouville domain. Here is the, 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 the cylinder is the half line times the boundary. And we can extend our symplectic structure on the, this cylinder by using the R coordinates on the half line as follows. The Liouville one form, this lambda here, when it's restricted to the boundary, gives us a contact form. Okay, so this is what a Liouville domain here is. Perfect. Well, this is, uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, this is the, this is the Liouville domain, D, and D hat is the extension when we glue the cylinder to it. Now we want to define uh, floor cohomology on, on these Liouville domains. We can do it for Hamiltonians, which are linear outside a compact set inside our Liouville com uh, completion here. So uh, by, by linear, I mean linear in the R coordinate we had on our F line. So we can define filtered fluorical homology. We have some nice long exact sequence in filtered fluorical homology with iota, here's the inclusion, and pi, here's the projection. We can also define uh, filtered uh, fluorical homology for compactly supported Hamiltonians on D. To do this, we extend this compactly supported Hamiltonian with a little slope on the cylindrical part. And then we just use the uh, uh, Fleur cohomology of that extension to define the Fleur cohomology of our compactly supported Hamiltonian. This is independent of the small slope we choose. Well, it needs to be smaller than some, some number, but as long as it's smaller than that, we have isomorphisms on the right here. So it's independent of that choice. When we take the full Fleur cohomology, then it's as as we would like to happen. It's, it's isomorphic to the singular cohomology from which it inherits a unit for the pair of fence product. So everything works nicely here. We can now define the spectral invariant of a compactly supported Hamiltonian on the Liouville domain as follows. This is the definition used by Schwartz and it's also the one used by uh, Fahnfelder and Schlenk. Um, here, iota less than c is iota c plus infinity minus infinity, okay? So uh, the, the unit sits inside that, uh, with in, inside that uh, c plus infinity level of action. Okay, and now we can also define symplectic cohomology. We take a sequence of Hamiltonians, which are linear and infinity, such that there are here, that doesn't make any sense. So it's on, on our Liouville domain, they are negative and they have increasing slopes when we increase I here. And then we can define the filtered symplectic cohomology of D as just the direct limit of all these Fleur cohomologies. For small enough epsilon, symplectic cohomology inside the window minus infinity epsilon just gives us the, the singular homology. And it also inherits a unit from that uh, isomorphism, all right. Now it's already known that if the symplectic cohomology vanishes, there exists a uniform bound on all spectral invariants on D. To, do, to see this, we need to define the SH capacity here, which is just the action level at which the singular cohomology vanishes in our symplectic cohomology. Then we can show that this SH capacity is finite if and only if symplectic cohomology vanishes. And using that, Benedetti and Kang proved in 2020 that when uh, you know, symplectic cohomology vanishes, then we have this uh, uniform upper bound on all uh, spectral invariants here. Okay. Now this is, notice that this is finite because this is zero. Perfect. Now for the main result. From the previous theorem, we know that the spectral norm satisfies uh, this following bound if symplectic cohomology vanishes. But when is the diameter infinite? 
Well, we prove the following here. If symplectic cohomology doesn't vanish, then the spectral diameter is infinite. Okay, so we have an if and only if statement here. Uh, symplectic uh, uh, spectral diameter is infinite if and only if uh, symplectic cohomology doesn't vanish. We prove this in two steps. Well, the, okay, I'll, I'll show you the, the very short sketch of the proof, but the proof is, has two main steps. First one is to construct the Hamiltonian with uh, spectral invariant arbitrarily large. This is good. And then the second step, we need to take care of the second part inside our spectral norm here. So we need to show that C1 h bar is greater than zero. This relies on the following theorem. If k is compactly supported in D, then its spectral invariant is greater or equal than zero. Now, this is really a result from Gana and Tani from 2020. Uh, here, we just adapted to the Liouville setting and cohomology setting. Yep. Um, if I have time uh, at the end of the, the, the talk here, uh, maybe I'll talk about more precise detail on how we build this Hamiltonian with arbitrarily large spectral uh, invariant. But for now, let me skip these three slides. All right. Now, following a, a continuity argument, we can use this, this Hamiltonian with arbitrarily large spectral invariant to compute spectral invariants of many Hamiltonians. And here by compute, I mean like precisely compute. So suppose we have symplectic cohomology not equal to zero. And we take this, this, this H here, which is compactly supported and autonomous. On the skeleton of D, H is equal to negative A. And everywhere on D, H sits between minus A and zero. So it's negative, but bounded from below by minus A. Then the spectral invariant of H with respect to the unit is exactly equal to A. Okay, so to, yeah, I'll come back to this maybe later on when I give the, the precise proof. Uh, the main theorem that we showed here that when S, uh, SH is not equal to zero, then spectral diameter is infinite follows from a sharper result here that we can prove by using this exact computation of spectral invariance. So we can actually build an isometric group embedding from the reals into the uh, group of compactly supported Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. And uh, this, with respect to uh, this on the right here, we have the spectral distance. And by constructing this isometric group embedding, we directly have that we have an infinite spectral diameter when SH is not equal to zero. So this, this is like a, a more precise way of proving it. Uh, are there any questions? Don't hesitate if there are questions. All right. Good. So now for applications. First application is to symplectically spherical manifolds. I'll just give some definitions to, to make sure everyone's on the same page. So we, uh, an symplectic, uh, symplectically a spherical manifold, uh, M is, 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 is such that its symplectic structure and its first train class both vanish on pi two of M. And then an open set of that M is incompressible if the map induced on the first uh, homotopy group by the inclusion is injective. Then we have the following. So we have M symplectically a spherical and D an incompressible Liouville domain of codimension zero embedded inside M with non-vanishing symplectic cohomology. Then the spectral diameter of that M as a whole is infinite. Very good. All right. Um, yes. And to prove that proposition, we proceed as follows. We show that for a compactly supported Hamiltonian on D, uh, its spectral invariant in M and in D are equal. This also follows from a result of Ganov and Tenny. And then we use, simply use the main theorem on the spectral norms. From this proposition, we can directly deduce the following corollary. Well, directly, I'll explain a little. Uh, so we have M closed and symplectically a spherical, then the spectral diameter of its twisted product is infinite. To see this, we notice that that diagonal inside M times M with the twisted symplectic structure uh, is a Lagrangian. We take a, a small neighborhood of it. We have an embedded uh, Liouville domain. We can prove 
well, this is just a, a cotangent just disk bundle over that Lagrangian. So its spectral diameter is infinite. And then we use the previous proposition. Okay. Now for some application to Hoffer geometry. For any A greater than zero, we can define the following uh, set. So it's EAM omega. It's just the complement of the closed ball in the uh, offer metric, side ham. And in 2010, Lehu posed the following question. Does EA have non-empty C0 interior for all A greater than zero? Some progress was made toward answering this question. Uh, the, the one we're interested in uh, right now is the theorem by Buhovsky, Humiliere, and Sefadini in 2021, which says that if M is close connected and symplectically is spherical and has infinite spectral diameter, then EA has non MTC0 interior for all A greater than zero. Okay, we, we can use this, these, these two conditions here to prove something, to, to answer the question of Leroux in some specific case here. So if M is close connected and symplectically spherical, we could use the previous corollary to prove that EA of the twisted product here has non MTC0 interior for all A greater than zero. So this is very direct application of the previous color corollary. So yes, that that finishes for the 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 the, the applications, and I don't know how much time I have left. Do I have like some time? Still have like yes, three minutes. I think three minutes. Uh, okay. No. Maybe I can just show you how how the the Hamiltonian looks. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as I told you, we want to to sh to show this that when SH is not equal to zero, then spectral diameter is infinite. How we do this? The first step is constructing a Hamiltonian with arbitrarily large C1H. Okay, this is what the Hamiltonian looks like. So, first of all, fix a like a positive number. Which is not in this the which is not a, a period of a reb orbit on the boundary, and let uh, eta a be the distance between a and that spectrum. We now we can choose delta and epsilon so that epsilon sits between delta a and eta a. Okay, we have this kind of uh, Hamiltonian here, which is constant equal to a delta minus one, then has slope a, and is constant once again equal to zero. And then with little slope so that we can actually compute this for cohomology. In terms of actions, okay, we have these orbits here, here, and here. This is one, two, and three. We have the following inequality. So the actions of orbits inside three are less than uh, a minus epsilon. And then on the right side, we have orbits in one and two here in terms of action. So the, the whole point, what we want to prove here is that uh, the spectral invariant is greater or equal than A minus epsilon. What we want to do here is prove that the unit, the words representative, uh, stays here, inside here. Okay, this, this is the, the whole proof relies on that. When we do that, we can prove that the spectral invariant is greater or equal than A minus epsilon. And I think that if I go uh, further than that, I'll not have any more time. So I'll take I'll, I'll end it here. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, hey, maybe I until have yeah. a question. Uh, so uh, assume that uh, this symplectic homology is large in some sense. Mm -hmm. Can you prove that you can embed a flat of high dimension? Uh, a what of high dimension, sorry? A flat. So you, you kind of said the following thing, that if, if it's not, not zero, so then you can embed Euclidean line. So can, oh, you, yes, yes, yes. can you embed, I don't know, Euclidean plane or n-dimensional space under certain condition, algebraic conditions? Uh, I, I don't know yet, but it's should be expected to hold. So I, I'm uh, I'll still working on these 
this, uh -huh. this kind of result. But this is very interesting line of research, I guess. This is the okay. next obvious step. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, very good. Very good. Yeah, but I, I know this holds in, in certain other cases uh, with other metrics, but uh, for this one, I don't, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, can you? Um, ask okay so can you maybe for like simple domains like maybe convex domains in r2n mm -hmm. use such a construction of a hamiltonian like the one you showed or to show to compare like symplectic homology capacity and spectral capacity maybe i, I guess i haven't done it yet but this this could be again, because they sound uh, like they should be the same in some sense, but at least for I mean for convex domain, it's a obvious starting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the definitions are not exactly the same, so it's not like mm -hmm. a tautological statement. No, no. Uh huh. I'll have to try, I guess. But this this the, the nice thing about this is that it's uh it's really easy to visualize and apply mm -hmm. in many in many settings so yeah yeah because then if you show this for example for convex domains then there are the works of uh theory and abundant dialogue that say it's just a minimal orbit and then you know the spectral capacity of convex domains which is nice idea. and you also right. know that it's the same when you embed it into any spherical manifold so so I guess it could be useful in mutations of spectral bounds. Yeah, yeah, this is very interesting. Yep, I'll look at that. <laughs> yep. Any more questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker again.